Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. It's a new month. That means there's a new LLM, and that is Starcoder LLM, guys. Introducing this new LLM that has been designed specifically for programming languages. Now, the Star Coder Base model has been trained over 80 programming languages, and this is something that we're going to be seeing from different places such as the stack as well as github and they are around 15 billion parameter models now this means they have a lot of computational power as well as have been trained on a vast amount of data and this is quite remarkable because it's being made for developers as well as programmers to write code and this is a large language model that helps you do so now in today's video not only am i going to showcase a little bit more about what this actual program is i'm also going to show you a little breakdown as to some of the data sets a little get a better understanding of their actual training data sets as well as get a better understanding of what this actual project is trying to accomplish we'll also go over the limitations as well as showing you guys how you can actually install it as well as playing around with it on the actual hugging face interface and this is something that we're going to be doing today and throughout today's video so before we actually get into this video hey, huge thanks up, to Welcome. big code which is the actual creator and contributor of this actual project so a huge shout out to him or he or she and uh, i hope you guys can go appreciate him for the work he has done to create this amazing project now if you guys haven't subscribed guys please do so there's a lot of content on my video that will definitely benefit you guys so i highly recommend that you check it out please subscribe turn on the notification bell check out all these other videos and with that thought let's get right into the video so this lm has been designed to help developers write better code it uses techniques such as multi-query attention which allows it to understand the context of the code and provide relevant suggestions now it also has a large content window of 8,000 tokens. It's, I believe, in precise numbers, 8,192 tokens, which means that it analyzes a lot of code at once to provide you an accurate suggestion of what you should be able to accomplish. Now, this LM was trained using a fill-in-the-middle objective on 1 trillion tokens. Now, this means that it has been trained to predict the missing code of a given program. Now, this could be quite beneficial for anyone who's learning code as well as for basically making the task of programmers quite easier so that you don't have to scroll and search through different ways to basically generate code. And it's going to help a lot of people for a common task. Now, this training has enabled LMs to provide this LM in particular to provide an accurate and relevant suggestion for coding problems. Now, this is something that we're going to also see in terms of analyzing their actual training sets, as well as get a better understanding of the actual tokens utilized. Now, here's just a little example as to preview some of the data sets that help you generate this type of content. Now, basically, we can see it here that you can type in something like below are the series of dialogues between various people and an AI technical assistant. This is just showing you how the actual use case or a data summary will look like of the actual use cases of this application. So you can say, can you write a test cases for this function? And it's able to do that and write you the format as well as the code that you will need for that example right here. And this is just a little example that you can see over here. And this is something that we'll also play around with on the playground field on Hugging Face interface. Now, in terms of the format, you're able to see that you have a human which gives the instruction. So you give the prompt and the assistant, which is the application, then answers it. And you can do like keep on playing around with the same prompt a couple of times to get the best generative answers i know there's some cases where you might not get the best answer so you have to play around a little bit to get the best formulated generative answer now in terms of use cases there are certain things that you can do you can talk about code to text you can get a text to code you can also do code to code which translates the code to a different code you can do text to text as well as general purpose q a about certain different things and this is one of the beauties of this actual LLM because we've seen LLMs on my channel. We've seen so many different projects as well as different things that are focusing on different aspects in the AI world. So it's quite great to see something like this that focus on a huge different area, which is actually programming and helping it, helping programmers with the ease of getting formulated better cases of generating code so this is quite remarkable guys and this is something that i have a huge hope for as to what they're trying to accomplish now let's take a look at some of the data sets as well as get a better understanding of some of the features of this actual application 
Now, in terms of its features, here's a breakdown of some of the main ones that I was able to see and find. Now, one of their mains is obviously code completion. Now, this LM can suggest code completions as well as for partial code snippets. Now, it can provide relevant suggestions based off the content that is given as well as the syntax of the code. This feature could be quite useful for speeding up the coding process and it will definitely help you find the right gender of content that you actually specifically need. Now, in terms of code generation, this is also a very useful tool as this LM can help you generate code from natural language prompts. Now, this means that anyone, any user can write descriptions of what they actually want to achieve this and the LM can actually help you generate the code that is needed to accomplish the original ta task that you initially gave it. Now, this can be quite like better for like new beginners of code writers as they're not someone who is familiar with code and it can help them with basic needs now another great thing that i was able to see is that it has a really good like way of detecting bugs in their actual system and i was playing around with this as it was able to help me detect bugs in different types of codes that i was able to give it obviously with this actual application on this interface you're not able to give it a huge prompt so keep that in mind this is something that you need to keep in mind because you're not able to upload large amounts of data as well as textual data to generate it so you got to make sure that you're not able to you're, you're not putting in a huge paragraph of code as it's not going to be able to do so properly so i recommend you putting small bits to get the best detections or whatever you're trying to accomplish as it's not there yet where it can analyze huge pages of code but this feature is basically able to help you reduce the time and efforts required to identify and fix bugs in your actual code. Another great feature that they actually introduced in their paper is that you're able to actually have different types of tech assistance that will help you out in providing you in suggestions as well as improvements for your code. It actually has showed it in their actual data set previews. If you flip through some of these you're able to have the assistant recommend different types of codes that will definitely be suggested and improved for your initial prompt that you give it so this is a feature that could be quite useful for a lot of people not even just beginners but also for professionals as it helps you do so much more in different cases of suggesting you the best code that is best fit for the actual task that is given now the last trait i thought was amazing about this actual application is its language language translation now basically this lm can translate any type of code of one programming language to another one so you're able to get this feature with this actual application which is quite remarkable because they have data sets of 80 different programming languages and this way you're able to utilize different types of uh, use cases of languages that are provided from stack and this is a data set of a real world code that can be extracted from open source repositories such as GitHub. And this is something that I'll be moving on to the next part, which is the programming languages that they actually utilize for their actual LLM. Now, if you can see over here, there's actually 86 languages as to what their data and programming languages are extracted from. And basically, this language includes popular languages such as Python, Java, C++, and JavaScript, as well as less common ones that you might not know about or use actually, which are like Lisp, Perl, and Fortran. And these are some of the things that we're going to be showcasing. Now, by training on such a wide range of programming languages, the actual LLM of Stark Order is actually able to provide you relevant suggestions and code completions for a broad range of tasks and this is something that you can see over here there's so many different languages as as to like how many files are extracted and used for the actual lm and this is just a small breakdown of what they've used because there's different ones that they can see that you're able to get different debug assistant like agents of the actual application that is using and utilizing different languages that will help you basically debug or assist you in giving you the best prompts to help you generate code and this is just an example of some of the ones that they use for github issues and the list goes on guys because if you look at this research paper you're able to get better under a better understanding of some of the things that they do to give you the best optimized generation for your code generation now this is quite remarkable as to what they're trying to accomplish now in terms of the distribution of programming programming languages you can see that the other smaller ones don't have a big emphasis as to an impact of 
like what data is extracted from it as the main ones are obviously cpp as well as these bigger ones like java and python that are more utilized to get you the best gender of code like gens and this is something that we can see in this graph over here now i'll leave all the links down in the description below as this is quite useful as to getting more information out of and if you want to do more research as to what they're trying to accomplish you should definitely check this out now let's take a look at some of the examples and use cases of what they've shown in their showcase and we're also going to be showing you guys how you can actually play around with this on this interface now if you go to the research paper all the way down you can see that there's some examples and use cases of different programming languages helping you with the lm generative content now in this case there's a description of jupyter format for predicting results you have a model input as well as a model output and you're able to see that github commits the different types of modifications that is you needed to fix it as well as show you what you should do and this is just one example of what you can do in terms of simple uses of pre-training templates there's also cases where it searches different things to actually assist you in this case this person gave uh, instruction that I need to integrate Python functions numerically. What's the best way to do it? And it actually helps you and helps you uh, like basically understand what you need to do in terms of writing the Python code that can help you install this function properly. And this is the generation that Starcoder gives you. And obviously it's not released yet. And I'm definitely going to make a video on this later on in, in the future that showcases you some of the generative use cases as well as when they have their own chatbot out in terms of how to actually use it on the web front as well as how you can install it locally i, I believe you can already do that locally but in terms of actually having a nice ui as well as official release of the actual llm and this is quite remarkable guys as to what they're doing now there's obviously going to be limitations so if you want to check that over here you're not going to get the best results all the time in terms of analyzing as well as depicting the best results for a larger data as well as larger contextual prompts so that is one thing to keep in mind and you're not obviously going to get answers to very complicated code at this current moment as there's no solution at the moment for those types of like generative code as it's a work in progress and it's currently just released so they're obviously going to continue to work and improve their model by implementing different types of data sets as well as implementing different innovative innovative like ways to improve the actual lm now let's actually play around with the demo so basically in this prompt i gave it this this is one of the examples that they have over here and basically is numbers to train a logistical progression model and it also told it to predict the labels of the test sets and compute the accuracy scores. And basically, once you click generate, it's actually able to prompt you the code that is needed to do your initial task. And this is quite remarkable, guys, because you're able to get so much out of this. And uh, definitely going to be quite beneficial for you in the day-to-day -day process where you're actually going to be needing it to do such things for developers that requires a lot of time. In that case, you can just use this application that will help you with providing you the best accurate generated code that is quite relevant to what you're trying to do in terms of your initial prompt and you i recommend that you check this out because you can do a lot in terms of playing with the advanced settings you can play with the temperature as well as the repetition penalty and you can keep playing around with it to get the best generative answers now in terms of installing it you need conda pi uh gig git as well as a visual studio code and these three as well as python so these are the four things that you'll need to actually install this and basically they have an actual instruction on how you can do that in terms of fine tuning it as well as installing it now you need to do this install this using conda and what you can do is quite self-explanatory as to how you can do it uh, you have the, all the libraries and instructions on the repo so i highly recommend that you check out the, this repository as it will definitely help you install it and there's also ways to use uh, fine tune it and install different ways to actually help you get the best generative answer and that's basically it for today's video guys on uh, star coder lm now i definitely believe that this is a powerful tool for a lot of developers and different use cases for a lot of users now it has been traded on a vast amount of data and i definitely believe it 
that it will definitely keep on improving with the hard work of Big Code as well as this team and improving this amazing project. And I definitely feel it like this will be an amazing tech assistant that will be a valuable tool for a lot of different use cases. So I highly recommend that you check this out, guys. I'll leave all the links down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like this video, and with that thought, guys, I hope you have an amazing day. Have a bright smile, and I'll see you guys soon. See you later, fellas.